Another Russian Fab 500 bomb was found several kilometers from the village Nekliudovo in the Shebekino urban district of Belgorod Oblast on the 10th of October, according to sources in the region's emergency services cited by the Russian news telegram channel Astra. No casualties or damage were reported. This incident reportedly marks at least the 128th airdropped bomb to fall on Russia and Russian-occupied territories of Ukraine from March to October this year, as calculated by Astra. Previously, UK intelligence reports suggested systematic issues such as aircrew fatigue, poor training, and unsafe tactical execution behind the repeated accidental bombings of Russian villages by Russian military aircraft. The Russian military has been modifying Soviet-era FAB bombs with unified gliding and correction module gliding kits to counter Ukrainian air defenses. These modifications add wings and satellite guidance to the bombs, allowing them to be launched from within Russian territory. However, this update has led to a recurring problem. The bombs often fail to reach their intended targets in Ukraine. Astra reports that FAB 250 and FAB 500 bombs are the most frequent types to fall short of their targets. Usually, these bombs do not explode upon unscheduled dropping and are later destroyed by explosive ordnance disposal teams. In a notable incident on the 4th of May, a Russian aircraft dropped a Fab 500 on Belgorod City, resulting in seven injuries, damage to 31 households and 10 vehicles. Authorities reportedly concealed the cause of the bomb's fall and its Russian origin. The issue is not limited to smaller bombs. In early July, a FAB 3000 bomb fell from a Russian aircraft onto Belgorod Oblast for the first time, exploding in a field near Shebekino. Due to its location, there were no casualties or injuries. The numbers in the names of these bombs indicate their total weight. The Russian army began actively using UMPK modified bombs in the spring of this year, with confirmed use of the winged FAB 3000 in Ukraine. Russian designers have extended the range of bombs by upgrading the UMPK kits. The design changes directly affect the aerodynamic qualities and, accordingly, the maximum range of the munition. Reliable data on the characteristics of the updated systems are unknown, but the basic kit increased the range of use to 60 to 70 kilometers. In addition, the new munition has a more complex design with a collapsible tail section attached to the bomb with eight screws. The innovation may be related to the technology used by the Russians to fill the bomb's body with explosives. Another Russian attempt to make gains in the east of Ukraine has failed. Ukrainian troops have thwarted a Russian army attack on the country's Kharkiv region where enemy troops attempted to advance towards Ukrainian positions in small groups, local telegram channels reported on Monday. Members of Ukraine's Spartan Brigade destroyed equipment and a platoon of infantry of the Russian invaders, and also took a number of Russian troops as hostages, according to reports. Thanks to the operation carried out by the Spartan soldiers, the Russian assault in the region failed. The brigade's aerial reconnaissance team first intercepted the movement of Russian military personnel and instantly launched strikes with the use of drones and UAVs. As a result of precise operation carried out by Ukrainian fighters, Russians suffered heavy losses. The adversary lost military equipment, in particular an infantry fighting vehicle and a platoon of infantry, according to reports in Ukrainian telegram channels. There has been no official confirmation of the latest operation in Kharkiv in Russia and Ukraine. It should be noted that since October 2023, Russia has stepped up attacks on eastern Ukraine where it has been slowly gaining ground. Eastern Ukraine has been contested territory since 2014, when Russian-backed fighters seized large swathes of the eastern Donetsk and Luhansk regions. The United States will send a terminal high-altitude area defense battery to Israel, along with the troops needed to operate it, the Pentagon said Sunday, even as Iran warned Washington to keep American military forces out of Israel. Major General Pat Ryder, Pentagon spokesman, 
said in a statement that Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin authorized the deployment of the THAAD battery at the direction of President Joe Biden. He said the system will help bolster Israel's air defenses following Iran's ballistic missile attacks on Israel in April and October. The delivery of the sophisticated missile defense system risks further inflaming the conflict in the Middle East despite widespread diplomatic efforts to avoid an all-out war. The Iranian warning came in a post on the social platform X long associated with Foreign Minister Abbas Arachi, who noted the earlier reports that the US was considering the deployment. Israeli forces and Hezbollah fighters in Lebanon have been clashing since October 8, 2023, when the Lebanese militant group began firing rockets over the border in support of its ally Hamas in Gaza. Late last month, Israel launched a ground invasion into Lebanon. Israel is widely believed to be preparing a military response to Iran's October 1 attack when it fired roughly 180 missiles into Israel. In a brief exchange with reporters before leaving Florida on Sunday, Biden said he agreed to deploy the THAAD battery to defend Israel. Biden spoke at MacDill Air Force Base in Tampa after making a quick visit to to see the damage caused by Hurricane Milton and meet with first responders, residents and local leaders. Ryder, in his statement, said the deployment underscores the United States' ironclad commitment to the defense of Israel and to defend Americans in Israel from any further ballistic missile attacks by Iran. It was not immediately clear where the THAAD battery was coming from or when it will arrive. Lt. Col. Nadav Shoshani, an Israeli army spokesman, declined to provide any timeline for its arrival, but thanked the U.S. for its support. The U.S. deployed one of the batteries to the Middle East along with additional Patriot battalions to bolster protections for U.S. forces in the region late last year after the October 7, 2023, attack on Israel by Hamas militants. Ryder also said that the U.S. sent a THAAD battery to Israel in 2019 for training. It also is not unusual for the U.S. to have a limited number of troops in Israel, which the U.S. considers a key regional ally. There generally has been a small number of forces there consistently as well as routine rotational deployments for training and exercises. The THAAD will add another layer to Israel's already significant air defenses, which include separate systems designed to intercept long-range, medium-range and short-range threats. According to an April report by the Congressional Research Service, the Army has seven THAAD batteries. Generally, each consists of six truck-mounted launchers, 48 interceptors, radio and radar equipment and requires 95 soldiers to operate. The THAAD is considered a complementary system to the Patriot, but it can defend a wider area. It can hit targets at ranges of 150 to 200 kilometers, and is used to destroy short-range, medium-range and limited intermediate-range ballistic missile threats that are either inside or outside the atmosphere. The U.S. Missile Defense Agency is responsible for developing the system, but it is operated by the Army. An eighth system has been funded and ordered and is expected to be in the field sometime next year.